In this video, we're going to build an AI-powered sales funnel AI agent that can help us filter quality leads and increase the chance to close more deals. And that's what we're going to build in this video. So in the previous couple of videos, we talked about how to build a AI agent that has long-term memory. And we also talked about how to build a WhatsApp AI agent that can be able to interact with the customers. In this video, we're going to combine those two together to build a lead qualification on WhatsApp that has long-term memory for the conversation and can be able to do the lead qualification. Basically, the way how the process works is that let's say you're in the real estate business and you get lot of messages from potential customers that are looking to buy real estates. You want to filter qualified customers that has the right target locations. They must be in the right budget and they must have to be approved for mortgage. So we want to filter out customers based on those criteria. So this is what we're trying to automate this process. And whenever the user is trying to send a message, the AI agents or the AI power sales funnel is going to help us to process this and be able to qualify leads based on their information. So that's what we're trying to build in this video. Now, before we go into the demonstration on how it works, let's take a look the lead qualification requirements that I set for the AI agent. So here you can see the requirements that we want to collect the user name and the target location that they want to buy the real estate must be in Vancouver and the budget must be above 100k and the mortgage approved must be yes. So the requirements that if all the conditions are met then we will mark this user as qualified and if any condition fails then we will basically exit the conversation gracefully. So basically that's the lead qualification requirements that we set for the AI agents to qualify the leads for us. So let me give you a demonstration on how it works. All right so to test the full future, I'm just going to start pretend that I'm a customer and I'm just going to say hi. Let's see what I respond. So here you can see it says hi there. May I start by getting your name? So I'm just going to say my name is Eric. One word answer. And here you can see it says hi Eric with my name. Thanks for sharing your name. Could you let me know where you're looking to buy a home? And here I'm just going to say Vancouver. That's going to be the target location. And let's see what I respond. So it says thanks for sharing. Could you let me know your budget for buying a home? So this time I'm going to provide an answer that's below the expectation. The expectation is that the budget must be above 800K. So here I'm just going to say, for example, 100K. And let's see what it responds. Okay, so clearly you can see that it says your budget is below what we're typically assessed with. And I want to clarify that we focus on buyers looking to buy homes in Vancouver with a budget of 800K or more. Okay, so clearly you can see that based on the conversation it has, the AI agents can be able to decide if we should filter out this lead or continue, right? Now, the good thing about this chat is that I can always change my mind. So for example, I can say that I changed my mind and my budget now is 800K. And let's see what it responds. Okay, so then you can see that it says, just to confirm that your budget is now set 800K. And then you can see that it proceed with the next qualification question, which is, can you tell me about your mortgage approval? So I'm just going to say, yes, I am approved for mortgage and let's see what it responds okay so then you can see that it says that just to finalize everything could you share your email address so then here i'm just going to enter my email address so this is my email address i'm just going to give a fake one email.com okay let's see what it says and here you can see it sends a confirmation message with the information that is collected from the conversation. And then you can also see that it sends a booking link where the user can be able to book time on the real estate agent's calendar for a private listing tour. And obviously you can be able to replace this link with the actual link. I'm just providing a fake link just for demonstration. But once we send a confirmation message like this, this lead will also be collected or entered into the database as well so that the real estate agents can be able to actually send a follow ups and reach out to the qualified lead to continue on with the sales process. So in that case, let's take a look at our database to make sure that the CRM is added for this lead. Now here you can see inside of our database, currently we're using Superbase and we have two tables. One is the conversation memory and the other one is customer table so the conversation memory keeps track of the conversation between the ai agents and the prospects and here you can see we have the sender and the recipient so who sent the message and who is the recipient of that message and for each record we can see that we also have a message content and the reason why we collect this is because when we send a message to the ai agents the ai agents need to know exactly what happens or what's the conversation so far so that it can be able to generate the response based on the conversation history. And now if we were to navigate to the customer table, you can see that we have one record added for this lead. And because we have qualified this lead, so you can see that it triggers this action to add this record onto the customer table so that the real estate agent can be able to follow up based on this table, right? Notice here that we also have collected the location, the email, the mortgage approved, the budget. So if it's approved, we're just gonna say true. It's a Boolean value. 
um, and then we also have collected location, the name, and in terms of the table here, we set the phone number as the primary key. So the phone number is guaranteed to be unique. So basically that's what we have inside our database, just the conversation memory and the customer table to basically keep track of the potential buyers so that the real estate agents or the sales agents can be able to look at this table and can be able to send them a follow-ups and be able to have a higher chance for closing the deal. All right, so let's talk about the actual workflow that you're looking to see. So this is the workflow that I have. Notice that the name that I give is version three point something because I have multiple versions of this workflow and I want to test out which one has the best result. And so far I'm pretty comfortable with this version of workflow. It seems to be more accurate with different edge cases. So let me show you how this workflow works. Okay. So here you can see we, at the start, we have our WhatsApp trigger. Now this WhatsApp trigger basically lists them for message. And here I have a if else statement to make sure that the message actually exists. And once we confirm that there is a message being sent to the AI agents, then what we can do is we were going to retrieve the conversation memories. So here you can see we have a super base node, which will basically try to get many for the conversation memory. And notice here that in the conversation memory table, we have a sender and the recipient. So that's what we have. And you can see that that's why we have a filter, which filter out to make sure that we have the sender equals to the WhatsApp phone number or the recipient equals to the WhatsApp phone number from the WhatsApp trigger. And then in terms of the conversation memory, we're getting a JSON format. And that's why we need a formatter. In this case, it's a code block, which I wrote in JavaScript, we'll basically format the conversation from JSON to convert it into a string. In this case, the string is going to be a dialogue. So for example, user said this, AI agent said this, followed by the user said this, AI agent said that, right? And you can see it's very simple. It starts with the conversation with the empty string, then it collects the AI phone number as well as the lead phone number. And once we do that, we're going to iterate through each of the memory items from the get memory block. And for each of the item here, we're just going to define the sender, who is the sender, AI agents or the user. And we also are going to extract the message. And if the message exists, we're going to append it onto the conversation string. So for example, this user said this, right? So then append the latest message onto the conversation as well. So that's gonna be coming from the sender, from the WhatsApp trigger. And then at the end, you can see we return the aggregate outputs. Now, if we were to exit this, we also have a large language model for the AI lead qualifier. Now, the reason why I didn't do an AI agent here is because sometimes the AI agents might just keep calling for the ad customer without making sure that the customer is actually qualified. So that's why I want to break it down to using a large language model here to basically do the lead qualification. And if it's qualified, it's going to send an output. And based on the output, we're going to see use a text classifier to confirm if the lead has qualified. If it is, then we're just going to continue the flow passing the data to the AI agents to add this customer onto the customer table. But continue the main workflow, once we generate the response, current conversation history, as well as the lead qualification criteria, then it's going to send the outputs to the WhatsApp to send the message to the user and also make sure that we keep track of the conversation history by adding the current lead message and the AI message to the Superbase for the conversation memory. Okay, so here you can see we're adding for the conversation memory table, create operation, we're basically insert a record for this is the message, this is the sender, and this is the recipient, okay? And we do the same for the AI message as well. We're trying to save the message into the conversation history. So coming back to the text classifier here. So based on the outputs and the conversation that we have, if the current potential buyer is qualified, then it's going to trigger this flow to pass to the AI agents and the AI agents here is going to add a records to the customer table, okay? Now you might be wondering, why can't we just have the text classifier, the arrow points directly to the ad customer so that it just directly add a customer once what lead has been qualified? Well, the reason is because we're using the from AI function for the fields to send, right? Because we don't know those value. We don't know what's the phone number, what the name. Uh, we haven't extract those information because that's gonna be another node to extract those information. But if we were to use AI agents, we can be able to use the from AI function so that by passing the name that we want to extract, for example, the name or the phone number, the location, the budget, or even the mortgage approved or email, then the AI agent is going to extract those information from the conversation and be able to automatically place those field values into the add customer node, okay? And it's gonna automatically find those values and be able to insert the records. And so far I do found that it's pretty accurate that is able to extract the right information. So that's pretty much the AI agent, right? So we're trying to use that to add a customer. We are using the text classifier here to make sure that the lead has been qualified and it has been confirmed, which is basically the core value of this workflow is to add the qualified lead onto our customer table. So pretty much um, I have multiple versions of this workflow and I tend to feel that this version is better because you can see that for each, 
the AI agents or large language model here, it has only one specific responsibility, a single responsibility. That's what we want to keep it for. And here you can see we have AI lead qualifier just doing one thing, just to reply the message, just to qualify the lead. And we have the text classifier here just to classify the text output. And we also have AI agent here to basically just adding the customer data so that in the future if we want to deploy this to live we know that in the execution we can be able to see which part of the function is causing the issue we can be able to have it easier to debug and be able to look at the logs on what happened right and if we were to put everything in just one single AI agents it will be very hard for us to control the sequence on which tool to call first and which tool to call second and also when to call and when not to call based on my past experience working with an AN so I found that sometimes the AI agents might make mistake because the instruction that we give tend to be too many and sometimes too vague so that's why we want to break it down into multiple large language models or AI agents here to complete the job so multiple large language models have a higher accuracy compared to just one single agent that does everything so that's what i found so that's pretty much it for this video if you found this video helpful please make sure to comment down below like this video share it with people to someone who needs it and if you're looking for more content like this please subscribe and i will see you in the next video